Hi there, me again, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. Just um, want to recognize today, six months ago today, I had my stroke. So right now it's a little after one in the afternoon. Uh, for those of you that don't know my story, I had my stroke a little after 10 in the morning, um, 21st of June. I had the good fortune of having my stroke at work and I had a really good friend um, unfortunately I had to watch me have my stroke and I was contemplating just going home because I, I just didn't feel well just generally kind of felt fluish unfortunately that's sort of a, a symptom of stroke some some report having felt flu like and then during the course of our conversation, I started stuttering more and was really confused. And it felt like I was walking through molasses. And then I couldn't hold my own body weight up. And then I found the floor. Um, yeah. So six months ago today, literally, figuratively, actually, in any respect you want to consider, I had the worst day of my life. Had the good fortune of having it at work, uh, because had I followed my own initiative and just stumbled home, I, I, I don't even know what that would have looked like. Um, unfortunately, the flip side of that coin is I had my stroke at work, and it, it's, it's kind of created a bit of anxiety about me actually going back to work, because... I now have to go back to the building where I had my stroke on a regular basis. So we'll, we'll just see how that plays out. It's been a interesting six months. Terrifying six months. Frustrating six months. There's been moments of sheer, absolute fear and terror. Uh... You want to see an interesting response in an emergency room? Tell them you want a DNR. Yeah, you're fairly healthy, you know, except for the fact you're having a stroke. Yeah, tell them you want a DNR. Um, you get a lot of people showing up in your room asking you why. Sadly, I was having a face, so I couldn't really intimate quite well why I wanted the DNR. I wasn't waking up a rutabaga. That was never going to happen mainly because of my experience working with brain injury clients and I happen to have had my stroke on my grandmother's birthday who had a stroke herself that she ended up um, in a nursing home unable to speak unable to walk you know not really able to feed herself well I, I, I knew the potential outcome and how shitty that could look uh, had to learn how to tie shoes again um, that was a stumble. I've had to learn how to walk properly again, using a full swing out gait, um, how to scan, track, and move at the same time. Uh, I've had to learn how to keep my own balance again. <laughs> had to learn how to talk again. Uh, if you haven't seen my videos on aphasia and apraxia after stroke, definitely you might want to check those out. The last six months has been very disheveling. Very disheveling. Uh, I thought I was kind of prepared for this whole little strokey thing. As much as I guess you can be prepared for a stroke. Uh, I knew more than your average individual about brain injury and, and, and brain injury recovery because of previously working with brain injured persons. Uh, I was pretty much, you know, ready for the potential outcomes. So to speak. Um, still have some difficulties, let's be honest here. Stroke recovery doesn't happen in a day. Um, if you watch my video on stroke recovery timelines, you'll know why. Eh, just
I know the next six months is crucial for my recovery and rehabilitation and, and, and my reintegration back into the world. I, I know it's crucial. So the next four or five days, I'm going to come up with a plan about how to get there. I recently watched a, a video on a channel I follow. won't mention the channel. It was for a functional fitness uh, video, um, which will help out my airsoft hobby. Kind of like, oh, I think I can do that. I know parts of it are going to be difficult because I still have my stumbles. I have to wear sunglasses indoors. Uh because the fluorescent lights just play havoc on my brain. I still have balance issues at times. Uh, bending over still can be difficult. So it's not that I'm at where I want to be yet. Someone I know uh, about a week ago remarked that, hey, you've recovered, recovered really well. And I had to correct them. I'm like, no, recovery's not over. Right. The phase of recovery that I'm at is I'm ready to go back to work. Uh, physically, I'm ready to go back to work. Mentally, um, I'm on the fence. <laughs> yeah. But physically, the recovery has gone significantly well. However, and I, I, I try to be as diplomatic as I could, like, hey, this recovery process technically is a lifelong event. Um, a recovery from stroke it is ongoing. Now, it is my intention, it is my plan, it is my goal, that 24 months after my stroke, you will not know I've had a stroke. Unless I tell you, or you stumble on this channel. So, uh, yeah. it's It's been difficult. And I always try to recognize the fact that I've been... If I was religious... And, and had a sense of religious mythology, uh, I'd have to say that someone upstairs was looking out for me that day. Sad thing is, I'm not religious. I don't believe in a higher power. Um, I don't believe in a God. Pick one. I don't, I don't care whose God it is. Um, I don't believe in it. It's not something that, that sort of sits in my... I'm a realist, and, and unfortunately you can't prove to me any God, and I don't care whose God it is, exists. Now, that being said, if you happen to believe in a God, great. You know, that, that that's your bag, not mine. Um, and I'm not here to slag anyone on your religiosity or your belief system. I might do a video about that, kind of my, I doubt it, we'll see. Um, now then, I had my stroke at work. I was planning on going home. Luckily, I didn't go home because I kind of stroked out relatively short after I thought maybe I might want to go home. The ambulance was there ridiculously quickly. Um, they put me on a neuro redirect to the nearest neurotrauma center. The neurologist happened to be the first doctor that happened to see me as I got off the ambulance. Um, uh, I got the TPA. Uh, within within an hour, maybe, of getting to the hospital, I I already I was in the hospital, and I remember having the CAT scan shortly after getting to the hospital. Within minutes of being brought into the hospital, I remember having the CAT scan. Um, I can remember getting the TPA within a quick. I don't know the time exactly. Uh, for she wasn't really paying attention to the clock. So there's a lot of things that played out in my favor. And, and I admit that I'm incredulously lucky, like stu stupefyingly lucky. I appreciate the fact that there may be people that are not as lucky as I am or have been. Uh, I also appreciate that this whole recovery process, I could plateau at any moment, and I could also, you know, have a step back. My brain could decide to completely make me have a do-over. Uh, I appreciate that I still have some stumbles and travels and hurdles and obstacles to get around through and over. I completely appreciate that. 
Um, I'm hoping not too many. But ultimately, the last six months, as I've said before, in, in a morbid kind of way, have been rewarding. Yeah. You get to learn a lot about yourself if you almost actually die. You get to sort of rediscover what you're able to do. Um, now, granted, I'm a stubborn fuck. And I'm a determined fuck. Um, and I was bound, fit, determined to... get to where I need to be or where I want to be. Uh, and the ultimate goal has always been to return back to work. That's been my ultimate goal. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And I'll keep you apprised of that journey as best I can. Um, and my ultimate long-term goal is 24 months after my stroke, you'll ever never actually know I've had a stroke. That is my ultimate long-term goal, to be in a position in a year and a half from today that you'll never actually know I've had a stroke. That's my goal. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. But ultimately, I'm lucky. I appreciate there are people that have had strokes that aren't having the same level of luck or success I've had and I can only imagine where you are and where, where you're at in your life and I, I can only imagine how disrupting disheveling disheartening that that experience is, is for you and I am truly sorry you have to go through it and I truly I'm truly hopeful that you can get to whatever your goal is um, and on that note, I'm going to record a video on goal setting and stroke. Okay. Uh, so, for those of you that have watched the channel over the last six months, uh, thank you. Thank you ever so much. I've kind of hovered lately around 46 subscribers. Um, and again, for those of you that have been watching the channel, recently joined, left comments, questions, uh, have emailed me, uh, thank you ever so much for joining the channel, leaving comments about the content. Uh, in some cases, sharing your own post-stroke journey. Uh, and for those of you that know someone that is either assisting and supporting someone going through their post-stroke journey or know someone who's actually going through their post-stroke journey, you might want to recommend the channel to them. Maybe there's some content they'll get some benefit out of. And if you happen to notice, either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke. Uh, and that's generally accepted to be uh, someone who appears... Uh, like immediately befuddled or confused they, they, just, they just don't know what's going on in the world right now someone who has eye issues immediate like quick onset vision issues they see in grayscale they can't see it in one eye they can't move their eyes left they can't move their eyes right you know someone who has facial droop they're not able to raise their arms equally effectively or at all they're unable to smile equally effectively or at all slurred stuttering speech inappropriate word usage for situation or context uh general body weakness weakness on one side inability to maintain their own body weight please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911 something so simple can save a life